Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm an actor, screenwriter, and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Tucker Rule. Tucker is the drummer for the bands Thursday and LS Dunes. In the past, he's also spent time drumming for Yellow Card, My Chemical Romance, Murphy's Law, and The Wanted. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Tucker, thank you for coming on with me today. Thanks for having me, man. So going back to the early days of your music career, uh, thinking you know some of the early days when Thursday was starting to grind it out, what did the work ethic look like, either either you personally or, you know, the band as a whole? Um, man, it was we were we kind of became obsessed with it. You know what I mean? Like, so we it was a very high priority to to get stuff done and to write songs and to have fun. You know, like when we when we first started out, we we, we literally started to play in our singer Jeff's basement because he had a, a like a you know, an infamous spot in New Brunswick called 331 Summer Street, Set Street, where you'd have shows, indie bands and hardcore bands, punk bands come by. We literally started the band to play with some of these bands. People kind of took took to it at first. And, you know, so we wanted to write more songs and we wanted to play with more bands. So, I mean, we were really like heads down, having fun, being kids, writing music and like l- living it. You know what I mean? Like it was, we were obsessed with with writing music. Do you think the, the work ethic for you personally comes from something in how you were raised or something else, some other external factor in your life. I always talk about when I went to my first show in Hawthorne, New Jersey at the Hawthorne American Legion and saw that it was booked by Ben Jorgensen, who ended up in armor for sleep. And he was like 14 at the time or something. Yeah. And I looked around and went, wow, this, this kid put this together. I can do this too. And I've, for sure. I've always carried that with me, you know, that's yeah. where, where do you think that came from for you? I definitely think it came from my upbringing, being a child of divorce. You know, I grew up with my mom and my grandparents. My mom ended up buying a house right next to my grandparents' house. And my mom was a postmaster. So she was a fucking boss, you know? So I grew up with, with someone who really like busted their ass to give me what, what I needed to have, you know what I mean? And, and raise a kid. So you know, she was, she coached my baseball teams. She was at every sporting event that I ever did. You know what I mean? So I kind of learned from her what it's like to work hard and not give up. And, you know, sometimes you, you just got to keep pushing, you know, when, when things are hard, you push harder. I think that that has really stuck with me and I owe it pretty much all to her and my grandparents too. Cause when she was at work, my grandparents would watch me. Kind of going off that, how has that persistence and perseverance that is needed to succeed in something like music. How has that come into play for you? Um, I mean, music industry, I always say this, it's it's not a gentle lover, you know what I mean? It, it really, it's a really hard place to work. You, you get let down a lot, you have highs, extreme lows, and you know, like you, like for me personally, I spend lots of hours of, a de- of my day in my garage with no windows, with no heat, no AC, you know, practicing drums. It's not very glamorous, you know what I mean? It's a will to go out there and do it. You know, it's not like I'm out in sunlight throwing a ball around or, you know, doing something like, you know, like that. So it's 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 just not it's not an easy place to be. It's not, music is, 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 is very fun, but the people that run it and the people that consume it sometimes can be very harsh. Um, but I definitely think that, you know, my favorite question that I that I get besides, uh, oh, you're in a band. Do you play locally is, um, oh, you're still doing that? It's like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm still doing it. Somebody has to, you know, so. <laughs> 
Well, it sounds like it was it was consistency for you. You know, it's, sure. if if you're still how you know you've probably been playing drums what at least 25, 30 years now, and Something you're like still that. out there. You know, like you said, out there every day in the garage, just banging away on them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I love what I do, and I love the instrument, and I love music. I, I don't necessarily love listening to music. You know, I, I'm, I'm one of those that I don't really listen to a lot of music. I, I listen to music for inspiration. I, I just, I, I'm, I love the drums, and I, I love getting handed a piece of music and putting drums to it is like solving the puzzle. It's like beating the end boss. You know what I mean? When you come up with a very concise, uh, you know, intelligent part to hand back to someone, it's it's like very, it's like beating the rubik's cube you know to me hey everyone just wanted to cut in here real quick to tell you about a great podcast that i recently found called good people cool things maybe you have a fascination with the supernatural or have you ever thought you could start your own tv network and the founder of comedy central didn't believe he could but then he did it anyway maybe you're curious to learn about musicians worst gigs or what it was like to work in a grocery store at the height of COVID-19. Maybe you just enjoy hearing interesting stories, then you should totally check out Good People, Cool Things. It's hosted by Joey Held, author, podcaster, and a guy with a soothing voice. Good People, Cool Things interviews business owners, authors, musicians, and other creatives. He talks about their careers, their worst moments, offers advice, and so much more. And every episode ends with a corny joke because we could all make a few more people groan in life. Listen and follow at goodpeoplecoolthings.com or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And also make sure you check out Joey's band, Burning Years. If you're a strung out fan, face to face fan, I, I think you'll get a, I think you'll enjoy them. So take a, take a listen to Burning Years and the podcast, Good People, Cool Things. How, how do you stay balanced in your life? I know, you know, I know we have kids around the same age and there has to be some separation between your work and the rest of your life, you know, because you could be on tour for months on end. And how do you kind of weave those things together to, to bring a balance to everything you're doing? Well, you know, fortunately, when I'm home, you know, especially when, when my daughter, my daughter's three now, um, when she was an infant, my mom or my mother-in-law would come over and walk her and I would run out to the garage and I would go play and practice while I had time to do it. Because my wife's got a normal job. She's got a great job and she makes tons more money than me. So I would I would just jump on that no matter what time it was. If the if the if one of the moms was coming over, I was going out in the garage, you know, so I'd had an, had an hour or two hours. Now, you know, luckily my daughter is in daycare school so i i can i have the day to kind of get in there and do my thing but touring is tough you know touring it's like i'm gone you know what i mean and that that sucks but but the the, the other side of that is when i'm home i'm like home home yeah you know i'm not i don't do anything else i'm here for for her i'm here for my wife and I'm taking care of the house and doing whatever needs to be done so when i'm home i'm home when i'm away it sucks i'm away and, and my daughter like i said being Two and a half, now three, you know, I was touring when she was two and a half. Uh, she's not very good at FaceTime anymore. Her attention span is, 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 you know, it's like, hi, dad. Bye, dad. Like, <laughs> I, I'd, I'd rather film the ceiling and run around and, you know. You've collaborated with a ton of different people over the years, you know, from, from Thursday to Yellow Card to, you know, the band that you're doing with Frank now, Ellis Dunes. What's something that you've picked up from one of those people, you know, whether it's, something kind of on the business end on the just the technical end that you said this person does this thing well i'm gonna bring that into my own kind of way that i work and what keeps me productive and creative i mean definitely you know when you like you said when you work with a bunch of different people there are definitely little tidbits of stuff that you that if if you're smart and you're in tune you take with you i definitely i mean as a broad answer to that like showing up I learned a long time ago that showing up to to the gig or to the job or to the uh, rehearsal or even to the tryout is super important. You show up and you put your best foot forward. Even if you're having a terrible day, it doesn't matter. You show up and you show up for your friends. You know, something you mentioned, Frank, something I get from Frank is like enthusiasm. Like that dude loves to play and that dude loves to write music. So when you get in a room with him, 
he loves it so much. And that's so it's, if you don't take it in, you're missing out, you know? So I definitely, you know, I, I feel like being a sponge and learning from as many positive attributes from people is, is the best thing. And also, you know, my mom always told me, you know, you surround yourself with people that are better than you. You know, it's the only way to grow. Yep. How, how do you organize your, I would say goal setting. You know, I love kind of thinking about goals and I have lists for my day and my week and it keeps me on track. And I've always been interested in kind of how other people are doing that to keep it, you know, keep yourself focused and organized. Do you have any sort of system for that? Uh, my goals lately, you know, over the past few years have been short term. You know what I mean? Like for me personally, wake up, take care of my daughter, take her to school and then I go to the gym. I have a, there's a CrossFit gym down the street from my house that I I'm not, I, I, I guess I know to CrossFit. Um, but I, I, I go there, you know, and then I come home, I chill out, I practice drums, you know, and then I go pick up my daughter. So it's, it's, it's basically like the goals are like to get my stuff in while I can, yeah. you know, to then, you know, and when I do that, when you show up for yourself, talk about showing up for people when you show up for yourself you could be a better person to your partner be a better father to your kids or a mother to your kids whatever i think that that the short-term goal for me has been the thing that works the best because i, I know for me I, I i have lofty goals and i've achieved a bunch of them but it's very easy to get complacent and it's very easy to to push things off and be like oh, i'll get to that tomorrow so I think the short term for me has definitely worked the best. You work better early in the morning or late at night if you had to choose one of the two? Early in the morning. Early in the morning. I like to get stuff done. And I, I like to give myself a lot of time yep. to, to, to do things. And if, you know, if I'm going out to do a drum track, I give myself three hours, knowing I'm going to get it done in an hour. You know, but I give myself that time just in case something goes horribly wrong. Because I'm one of those people that if... If my day gets thrown off a little bit out of my schedule, I'm like, I get real wigged out. A like real wigged out. Awesome. Anything you want to plug before we go? Yeah. Thursday's playing a couple shows this year. Uh, Jason Fest being one of them. Also, my other band, LS Dunes. Uh, we're about to go out to the desert and play a couple of shows in LA and in Joshua Tree. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking uh, forward to getting in front of people again and playing some music because... Uh, I'm tired of doing it by myself in my garage. <laughs> awesome. Tucker, thank you for talking with me today. Mike, thanks for having me, man. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic, and check out theartistsworkethic.com.